The Miami Hurricanes have a very promising season upcoming in the 2022-2023 college basketball season. They're probably going to be competing for an NCAA tournament repeat of what they did making the Elite Eight. What does their roster look like and what does the draft outlook look like for their roster coming up on Locked On NBA Big Board? You are Locked On NBA Big Board, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, what's up? My name is Richard Stamen. You probably know me better as at Mavs Draft on Twitter. For once, I'm actually wearing the appropriate shirt for what I say. I'm not wearing an Indiana shirt. I'm not wearing some Charlotte Hornets. I'm not wearing some super obscure shirt. I'm actually wearing a Dallas shirt. So first time for everything, I suppose. Uh, thank you for making Locked On NBA Big Board the first listen of your day, whether you're listening to this as it drops Tuesday afternoon or on Wednesday morning or Tuesday night. Really appreciate your continued support throughout the off season. It is the final days really final 36 hours of august which means we are just a few weeks away from training camp and with that college has started college classes have started uh, which means college basketball is right around the corner teams have finished up their international tours and the pre-college classes starting uh and and, you know that that's pretty much in the side of college basketball is here practices are underway uh we're only we're about 60 days away a little bit more from real college basketball happening. So the the dead period is almost over. We'll be returning to five days a week. Again, we are the only NBA draft show that is five days a week. Can't find that anywhere else, The Daily Show. If you're not already, please give us a follow on YouTube. Subscribe. Really means a lot to us. We're trying to grow our platform. And again, we're in a competition ahead of the offseason ending. Uh, so before the regular season, we're trying to compete with the big boys in the NBA shows. Would really, really mean a lot if you subscribed at Locked On NBA Big Board. So let's talk about the Miami Hurricanes. If you recall, uh, I, don't, I don't anticipate everybody has been following me for the last year, but uh, really three years for this one. So I've been a big fan of Isaiah Wong at Miami for quite some time. I'm just an overall fan of how his game is played. I think he's very smooth. Uh, I'm a, he should have been the 8CC most improved player of the year in 2020 to 2021. Went from seven points a game to 17 points a game, upped his efficiency, uh, was just overall better in every way. Instead, it went to Matthew Hurt. Not not undeserved, but I uh, thought Isaiah Wong had a better case. So because of Isaiah Wong, I've been following Miami a little bit closely. And admittedly, I, I grew up a Miami Hurricanes fan. I went to school in Texas, so that kind of faded away a little bit, but I still keep up with them. Uh, so a little bit of overlap and really liking one of their players and then um, – having you know growing up a Miami fan I had an extra eye on them but Isaiah Wong is somebody who I really like I got to see him out in May also ran into Nigel Pack uh top transfer transferring into Miami so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about six guys on Miami and I'm going to break it down a little bit in the college perspective and the NBA perspective of what to look for this upcoming season so I'll do this in pairings I'll start with Isaiah Wong so With Isaiah Wong, I could write a book about why I'm so much of a fan of him. His points per game dropped this year. He did enter the draft, uh, had some workouts, got some feedback. Did the same thing last year. Uh, And for the second straight year, I know one of the top things they've told him is speed up your jump shot because the numbers aren't terrible. For his freshman year, he took one and a half threes a game, shot 37%, 83% from the line on two and a half attempts per game. As a sophomore, that free throw percentage on double the attempts went from 83 to 80, still very good. Uh, Pretty much if you're clear of 80, you have good touch. That's generally the takeaway. Three-point percentage, while he did take, he went from one and a half threes a game to 5.3. Three-point percentage only dropped two points to 35%. That's respectable, especially with that 80% three-point, excuse me, free throw percentage. And then this year, though, the numbers, both of them fell off. On four attempts a game, he went to 30%. Uh, then on free throws, the I mean, he dropped one a game from 4.7 to 3.8 and went to 75%. Again, though, 75% is still pretty good. So the free throw percentage doesn't scare me. Uh, watching him in person, I know the touch is there. He gets a deep follow through every single time. The way the ball goes off of his fingers, there's no awkward movement. There's no thumbing of the, of, of the ball in any way. There's really nothing awkward like that. So you don't have to worry about you know, does he have touch or whatnot? It's really just, he has a low dip and it's a slow shot. So that combination is kind of a fatal flaw for him. But the good news for him is that he, it only really affects him on spot ups. Uh, I had posted a video of him getting blocked on a, on a shot that he had no business really getting blocked on uh, in the corner. And that's where the shot speed needs to be improved because 
for him, I think he has the best crossover in the in the country right now, uh, especially among returning players. I think it's not even close. He can create space better than anybody in the country. Just the way he has deception, speed, mobility, and flexibility, all the tools you need. He has great handles. I think he's really great at creating space, and that's why his off-the-dribble shooting is good. I don't worry about his off-the-dribble shooting whatsoever. Uh, combine that with the fact that he's got a high basketball IQ, uh, I, I think there's just a lot to like for him overall. And he uses that on both ends. Yeah, he's 6'3 and doesn't have, he's not super strong or super long or anything, but he knows where to be and he knows how to use his body to his fullest. So I really like that. Um, I, I know this is a prime example of why I trust his jump shot off the dribble. This is honestly astonishing looking at the stats. So the three point percentage off the dribble, it's like mediocre. It's 32.5%. For college basketball, I know that sounds not great, but for three point percentage, it's really not that bad. For two-point percentage, though, it's actually elite, I would, I would guess. I, I, I assume there's no really like percentage to uh, percentile it, I guess, or to quantify it against his competition, but 48% on twos on off-the-dribble jump shots. So that's really impressive. And that was this year. I don't even know what it was last year. Um, I'm pulling this up now. but And then remember, the, the percentages were a lot more favorable last year. So for – actually really improved this is a testament to just how good of a shooter he is and how much better he has gotten so sophomore year he was 32 percent on this it's all almost the same volume 32 percent from three off the dribble 41 percent from two but went to 48 percent which honestly this is the first time i'm seeing that that's pretty incredible so for me i really buy isaiah wong's jump shot even though it's slow, I think he'll be passable, especially because he can shoot so well off the dribble in the mid range. When you don't know if he's, his quickness is going to get him to the rim or not, where he's very athletic, you don't know if he's going to go to the rim or step back. He's really hard to defend. So I really like that. I think playing with Nigel Pack is going to open up a lot of doors for him. I'll talk about Nigel Pack coming up, but um, then I want to talk about somebody else first before going. I don't want to, you know, spoil everything all up front. Another player that they have, there are six guys that are really intriguing. I think they're a, a top-heavy team in that way. They're six-heavy, uh, maybe seven. And it really starts with uh, the transfer, Nor Norchad Omir. He is from the Sun Belt. He was at Arkansas State where he was completely decorated there. He was from Hialeah, so he's coming home to Miami, South Florida. He was the defensive player of the year in Sun Belt. He was the player of the year all tournament. Did a bunch of stuff there. Um, and in my opinion... Uh, Norchad kind of topped off the the top transfer class for Miami in the entire country. You look at what his numbers were, 18 points a game, 12 rebounds a game, 1.2 assists, 1.6 steals, two blocks a game, foul troubles an issue, over three uh, in under 30 minutes a game, both years. Uh, so that's concerning, but shot 63%, 73% from the line. So there's a lot to like there. He smothers shots. He's going to be a big man for them. The only problem is, is he's six seven. So this kind of feeds into the whole Miami picture. They're small. They're going to have three guards, maybe four that are all under six five, and that's really concerning. So Isaiah Wong is six three. Nigel Pack is six foot. Jordan Miller is six two. And then don't forget Harlan Beverly is coming back, who is the tallest of them, and he's six five. So their three main ones that played last year are all six three and under. So that's pretty concerning, but Norchad Omir, I think they're going to play as a small ball team. They're going to run fast. They're going to play to their strengths a ton. What I like about Norchad Omir, while I don't know if he's going to declare after this year, I think he's probably going to use all of his eligibility. Um, I really just am enamored by how much he is going to hold down the line at the rim. They, Miami really hasn't had a great presence at the rim with this young core, especially just under uh, with Isaiah Wong. Uh, so I really like him there. I think he's going to help – Isaiah Wong's assist numbers because he'll have someone to dump off to. That was something Omir was great at. Guys would, it was drive and dump. Like he would be the cutter uh, sitting in the right outside the paint, take one, two steps in, boom, dunk it, lay up, whatever it is. He can finish around the rim very well. I'm really excited for him. So between the two, you got Norchad Omir, who I think is going to be more of a college impact than an NBA impact, but still has NBA upside. And then there's also Isaiah Wong, who I think he declares and stays in this next year after a big jump so there's a few more i want to talk about uh we'll get to all of them nigel pack is going to be coming up next and then i'll also talk about anthony walker somebody who has been a little bit i don't want to say polarizing but he hasn't taken the right steps forward that we all thought he would so gonna talk about him but first 
Let me tell you about our friends over at Built Bar. If you haven't tried the Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. It's delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite. Ch cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein. And that's why actually after this, I'm going to the gym to play basketball and I had a small-ish lunch. I'm taking a built Bar with me. I'm eating that, going to work out and I'll be completely covered. I won't have to worry about getting hungry, any of that. So go to run, runtobuilt.com and snag a box for you and the family. It'll be the perfect treat or if you can find a hiding, hiding place for yourself and just order them all for you. Uh, that's kind of what I do. So what's great about built is that all their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You're going to love the new cookie dough chunk puffs, whether you need a snack for your workout like I do, a late night treat, or just need to, to grab a quick bite. Built is the perfect protein bar and they taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, fat, and sugar. Grab yourself a built bar. And we have a special offer going. If you go to built.com, Use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15, locked on 15, excuse me. It's one word, LOCKED15 on to get 15% off of your order. So again, my name is Richard Stamen. You probably know me better as at Mavs Draft on Twitter. Again, wearing the Mavs shirt, so if you're not seeing it, go to YouTube. You can see it. It's nothing too crazy. It just says Dallas basketball. But I'm actually appropriately dressed for once, which is nice to, nice to see. Because uh, Raphael always roasts me for for not being dressed right, uh, wearing being Mav shaft and then wearing like a supersonic shirt or something. So uh, always good to be to be on that path. But come returning back to the Miami Hurricanes, so I am completely enamored with them. I'm actually going to be posting something later this month, uh, or I should say next month in September, uh, on them about just the NBA upside, going kind of similar to this. One of the, so I said earlier between Norchad Omir and Nigel Pack. Miami has the best transfer class in the country. And there was only two transfers, but they got two elite transfers. So let's talk about Nigel Pack, the other half of it. While this may not seem like the most appealing NBA player from just the measurements, he's six foot, 180 pounds. Uh, Nigel Pack is far and away the best shooter in the country, regardless of position. Like easily, easily the best. For Here are some numbers. Uh, as a freshman, he took 6.2 temps per game. 40.5% from three, 79% from the line. And that was with 12.7 points per game. As a sophomore, Nigel Pack jumped up from 12.7 points a game to 17.4. But not only that, his free throw percentage went up five points to 84 and a half. His three point percentage on more attempts went up 3% to 43.6%. And his field goal percentage, 45.5% which is really impressive because his two-point percentage went from 43 to 48. That's a big jump, that 5%. So again, I got to see him and Isaiah Wong work out in Miami in person. And while both of them were pretty routine workouts, it wasn't like some crazy drills or anything. They were just kind of doing their thing. Nigel Pack really impressed me. Um, you can find the video. I think it's actually one of my most watched videos ever. But Nigel Pack made 20 straight threes. And I, I, that's only the stuff I got on camera. There was more than 20. Uh, in a row, which, you know, if you're an NBA player and you watch them, like, I don't know, you watch, uh, I, I don't want to throw in like Steph or someone all time great, but you look at like, let's say Joe Harris, Joe Harris is arguably one of the best shooters in the league. I don't know how often he hits 20 in a row in practice. Um, Nigel Pack could probably keep up with him. And that's the level of a shooter Nigel Pack is. And I think that's the biggest praise I can give him for just how good of a shooter Nigel Pack is. He, and on top of that, like, with his jump shot, what makes it so special is just that he can shoot from anywhere. He can shoot at any angle. He comes around screens, boom, he's quick. He beats the defender. He's quick off ball. He's shifty. So, like, when there's a screen he's going around, he can fake, come back, and not lose any footwork. His footwork is magnificent. And on top of that, he's shooting from any and everywhere. It's special. Like, he can spot up from the logo on movement and hit it consistently. Like, the numbers are just insane. In fact, I'm going to pull up some of the same numbers I used for uh, – Isaiah Wong, let's look at what those spot up numbers and off the dribble were for three. So on catch and shoot jump shots, I, I mean, this is, this is mind blowing numbers on overall, he shot 47.6% on catch and shoot threes. 
on 69 nice um, guarded three point attempts for spot ups. He shot 45%. And then on unguarded, he shot 51 on 55 attempts. Like this is just stupid efficient. Even even on, on off the dribble threes, he shot 37.2% from three. And you look at the two point percentage, it's also ridiculous. It's actually lower than Isaiah Wong's, which is crazy, but 45% on, on 58 attempts. But I mean, over half of your open shots are going in. That's not something you see often. Even the best shooters do not shoot very often 50% on open threes. It's not exactly the most common thing. So I'm incredibly impressed by Nigel Pack. Uh, really just a huge fan of what he does. And then on top of that, I'll, I'll kind of wrap up the Nigel Pack talk with there's one thing that really separates him is just a six foot shooter. And that's the fact that he's quick. He can be a playmaker. And this is the big one. He has a giant killer floater. I saw him practicing that. His dad was with him making a point of it. He said, you know, you're going to have to shoot over seven footers. The guy, guys who are literally one whole foot taller than you, you're going to have to be able to consistently do it. And his touch is so good. This is, I mean, I, I talk about this a lot. There are three things that I think, or two things that aren't jump shooting that really play into touch. And that's floaters and runners. And then also free throws. Those two things indicate touch and Nigel Pack's floater and runner is really good. In fact, um, his, his floater runner on synergy lists in the 91st percentile. So all the signs are there. He can shoot over defenders. He has really good arc. He knows where to put the ball off the backboard or not use the backboard. He's very good at that. It's just instincts for shooting for days. So I'm really impressed with him. I think he gets drafted actually. Uh, ESPN put him at number 58 in last in their way too early mock. It's not exactly a hot take to say that. I mean, when you come around like elite shooters, it doesn't really matter about the size. He can do other things that make him so special. You can fit him into any lineup, even being small. If you have like a Ben Simmons or something running the point, it makes up for the size deficiencies. So I really like that fit. I'm a big fan of him. Let's talk about Anthony Walker for just a minute. Um, he was a guy who he went the wrong direction. It was unfortunate. He was a guy who I thought being 6'9", really athletic, averaging 10 points a game, five rebounds a game as a sophomore. I thought he was primed for a big jump to help Miami take a step forward in team success. And mind you, this is a team. They made the second weekend of March, and they actually lost in the Elite Eight. And they were with Kansas in the first half. It wasn't like they, was just, they were there, they showed up, and then they left. They were there for the first half, and then they just got unbelievably cold. Um, I really thought Anthony Walker, if he had been better overall, I think the Miami team probably hangs in there a little bit more. But again, one game, he only he was one of four. It's not obviously on him, like 15 minutes, so it's not like anything like that. But having him as a more useful player would have been really valuable. Uh, he didn't play over 20 minutes, but twice in February. Um, after non-conference, that was pretty much it. Or after the new year, that was pretty much it. So he went down to five points a game from, I mean, the points were pretty much halved. That's really alarming. I think he does still start and I think he can come back, but you know, for Anthony Walker, you want him to be a little bit better just on both ends uh, and utilizing his athleticism. He should be a better finisher consistently given how athletic he is at six, nine. Um, I think, you know, coach Laranega is going to be confident in him. And I think that's ultimately a jump for him. I, I thought maybe he could be an NBA guy, but it's going to be tough to be a breakout senior uh, granted, I think he has two more years of eligibility. The whole COVID eligibility thing is tricky for me, but look for Anthony Walker to take a jump. That was just kind of a touching on him thing because he he is the weakest link on this roster of the players who do play the most time. Uh, and no, no do, with all due respect, excuse me, no disrespect intended to Anthony Walker, just given the players we're talking about, I think he is the one who has the most room for improvement. So, And also I said I, there were six guys that are going to be seven. I'll talk about the remaining three. Uh, coming up in just a moment, Jordan Miller. There's also uh, AJ Casey, an incoming freshman, and then Harlan Beverly, who missed all of last year. But a uh, quick word from our sponsors first, and then we'll get right into those three. So finishing this up, let's talk about some of the final guys on Miami. Uh, I think this is where the NBA upside starts to really take a drop off. Now, that doesn't mean none of these guys will ever play anything NBA, G League, Summer League, anything like that. I actually do think multiple of these guys will. Um, let's start with Jordan Miller, Jordan Miller. Uh, and actually I got his height wrong. I, I said he was six, two, he is six, six, which is a big part of what I was about to say is his versatility is really valuable. Um, you know, you look at somebody who he averages roughly every single year of his career. He's averaged six rebounds a game can be, can defend multiple positions. He's tough. 
finishes very well. He transferred in from George Mason, and while the points did take a, a hit, his field goal percentage went up 10 points. Like he went from 16 points a game to 10 points a game. And on, that was from 46% shooting to 56% shooting and 65% from two with most of his shots being two pointers. His value is going to be coming from the defensive end and being able to guard pretty much one through four, one through three or four. And that's super valuable. And I think ultimately with Jordan Miller, if he could just shoot this year, even if it's lower volume, uh, and I think this is pretty sustainable because the first three years of George Mason, every single number was the same on, on similar volume, 33%. Needs to jump up from 29 to 33. It's definitely feasible. <clears throat> so I really think that's his big area of improvement. 70 something percent free throw shooter year in and year out. Would like to see him take a jump, but ultimately that toughness is going to be what gets Miami a big edge in guard play uh, and a little bit of off guard play in ways, but he's versatile and he can finish very well. So I'm interested to see how he looks as a senior. i look for him eventually to get NBA summer league looks. I mean, guys with that mentality and, and efficiency and playing to their strengths, that there's a reason they latch on. I think he will. I think he's a future pro for sure. I wouldn't be surprised to see him in the G league giving guys nightmares. So uh, I really like him excited to see what he does. Then there's Harlan Beverly. Harlan Beverly is a little bit tough to judge. I'm, he was a top prospect uh, for Miami. In 2019, he was a top 60 recruit. Only played four games last year. Really missed most of the season because he only played 36 minutes. With him, you're hoping for, as Miami, to bolster an already strong guard group and make it even stronger. Um, he's super athletic. I mean, he can get his head at the rim, uh, can play make. Not really a shooter. That's the downside. But you look at somebody who is just going to get to the rim and hopefully draw fouls, that would be a nice area for him to improve on. Uh, the free throw percentage has never really been strong. The shooting's just not a strength for him. But with Harlan Beverly, you look for defense and hopefully um, just slashing. That's really what you want. You want to see turnovers reduced. Maybe last year, getting healthy. You hope he refines some of his rawness. It sucks that he didn't get to have any in-game reps, but – uh, really interested to see how he does there. I don't know if he plays uh, beyond the NBA Summer League or G League, but uh, he's also definitely a pro, as all are all of these guys. And then the last one is A.J. Casey, who is an incoming freshman. Not a ton on him, um, but I really liked his jump shot. I think he's pretty modern for a forward. He's fearless, great athleticism. Um, <clears throat> I think he's just going to be someone who adds a lot of value to a winning team. Probably going to play 10 to 15 minutes as a freshman. I wouldn't expect a ton more, but those minutes are going to be efficient. So look for him to be a future player in, in NBA draft potentially. I mean, around 6'8", can shoot good athleticism and plays hard. I don't know what his defensive playmaking look like. The AAU film is really limited on him. So it's going to be hard to tell, but look for AJ Casey to potentially be a name to monitor going forward. So that's, that's the Miami Hurricanes roster. We've talked about Isaiah Wong, Nigel Pack. Harlan Beverly, Orchad Omir, AJ Casey, and Jordan Miller, as well as Anthony Walker also. Uh, we'll be back. We're, again, starting this up back up full-time, five days a week pretty soon. If you're not already following us on YouTube, it would really mean a lot. Locked on NBA Big Board. All you have to do is hit subscribe. We're not asking you to like any of our videos, comment on our videos. It would be cool if you did. But we're not asking you to do that. We just want some subscriptions to get our numbers up right now. So when, you know, when, we, when the season gets rolling – we have some some base here because uh, I know we ha all have a lot of loyal followers on Twitter uh, between me, Raphael, Leaf, and Sam. It'd be cool if y'all could join us on YouTube. So I uh, really appreciate you listening. Thank you so much. Again, we'll be back tomorrow and uh, for the rest of the week. For the time being, have a wonderful rest of your day.